This is the Chira zone of Washi Oil. A few, a sample space of the Chira zone leaders, MC leaders, which is led by the wonderful and the beautiful and magnificent Pastor Rukia Mukwezi, which she leads with her wonderful husband, Pastor Edison Mukwezi, who is now in Nairobi. Let me tell you, if, if your zone, you're, you're leading and you're both there, I mean, these guys, <laughs> they divide and conquer. So one went to Nairobi, I think he's starting another zone there for the, yeah. <laughs> wow, so guys, welcome. You're looking good. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> How you feeling? How you feeling? I don't know. I don't know. Like Just, you can lift the mic. Just can you hear me now? Oh, Joe. That's, that's the best. <laughs> so, tell us. How has been your experience leading a zone? Tell us a bit more about the things I've just been telling people. What's an MC? What's this frontier thing? These things that we keep talking about. What is this? Talk to us a little bit. Just give Good us morning, a little Chad. bit of Good morning, My name is Rokia Mohwezi. Um, together with these incredible people, we lead the Chira Zone. Some are MC leaders, some are hurdle leaders. And my experience leading a zone has been life transforming. Like the dynamics are very different. Eh? You see, it's one thing to come to church every Sunday. It's another thing to be responsible for the people that come to church and actually be responsible for more people. Like the dynamic is completely different. So it's been very stretching in a good way but mostly very exciting because of the transformation that happens in the lives of people. Like seeing someone, um, if I would share a story of one of the leaders, he's called Chris. Chris, please hey, wave to the people. Chris, wave to us. Oh! Yes, that's Chris Musoke. So Chris... That like Christine or like Christopher? Um, no way, he's Christopher. <laughs> <laughs> so, I met Chris as an MC leader, while I was an MC leader. We had gone for evangelism, and he got saved. So he started coming to my MC. So when I stopped leading the MC, I referred him to another MC. And Chris has grown and is now leading an MC of over 14 people. Wow. So to see that, that, that transformation from, from someone being just a normal Christian, a basic Christian, to them now being accountable for others. So that has been exciting. That is awesome. My goodness, my goodness. We want to hear a few more stories. There are people in here who have some stories of how they have led MCs, how MCs have transformed them and all these wonderful things. Do you have some people? Yes, oh, awesome. sure. Can you see that walk here? That's how a Zono pastor walks. Just come a bit close and tell us. Uh, good morning, church. Good morning. My name is Joshua Tusi Ngwire, and I lead uh, Celebrate MC. Hey. Um, leading an MC has transformed me in very many different ways, but two are notable. One is in the area of my finances, and then uh, two is in uh, my knowledge of the transforming power of the gospel. Um, in the era of finances, there's a time when my finances were really, really stretched. I could barely get by. And uh, during one of uh, the one-on-one -on -one sessions with uh, Pastor Kia, she asked me whether I had read Apostle Moses' books on uh, honor and SFFG. I had read SFFG, but it was a bit rushed. The principles didn't sink in. So she lent me her copy of honor because uh, I couldn't afford my own copy at that time. So when I read the principles and the testimonies in that book, I knew I had to begin honoring the people in my life. I did that and something powerfully in my finances broke loose. I went ahead to read SFG and at that time uh, there was an advert to join uh, a mastermind, an SFG mastermind. I joined the mastermind and right now, everything has totally changed. Just, just because of having a leader over me who is dedicated to seeing that our lives are transformed for the better. The other way in which my life has changed as being an MC leader, in seeing people's lives being changed from being normal, ordinary Christians to take responsibility in church, uh, take roles, begin doing evangelism, get into prayer, and begin their own MCs, 
and they themselves begin leading and transforming other people's lives. That has allowed me to have more reverence for the power uh, of the gospel. Thank you so much. Thank you, Joshua. Come on now, that's, that's beautiful. You know, two things here I said that have caught my attention. It's not only transforming him, it's transforming the people he's leading, which is the beauty of this discipleship place, you know, that you're leading and you're transformed, but there are also people behind you that you're transforming. That's how we change the nation. This is so awesome. He said something about seeing the power of the gospel in the lives of the people he's leading. Do you have like a story of at least someone? Yes. Because he didn't so give much. us a story. <laughs> So he said, I saw transformation, but now, like, we just want to know. So much. So there's a gentleman right here. He's called Shavan. Shavan, so Hey, my God. <laughs> oh, so, so this is Shavan. Shavan was recently a Muslim. So Shavan's wife started going for MC in Chirania, Chirapolis, Chiinda. So she started telling him about Jesus. You see, Jesus, Jesus, to look okay, what? And he really didn't want to know. So over time, the lady finally accepted Jesus, and she confessed Jesus as Lord. So she started transforming, like she became a different person. And he started being inquisitive about it, of, eh, what is this thing they tell you about? So the MC leader, Isaiah, went to visit them and met Shavan. And at that point, they were starving, literally no food, what, and they are stressed. And Isaiah, they provided food as an MC for them and just took them in. A few weeks later, Shavan himself said, you know what, I want to get saved. So just like that, he got saved. So that's the kind of transformation we are talking about. Wow. Come on. You I, I want to lead an MC. <laughs> I am now ready. Wow, this is good. I mean, you can see the transformation. Lol. <laughs> this is so good. Wow. Thank you for sharing these stories. This is awesome hearing what God is doing in this, you know, seeing the stories live of people's, people who are being transformed. And I think that there are many people who are not yet in MC whose lives could easily be transformed if you just made that one decision that puts you in an MC. Or some of you are not leading an MC and you don't realize how many, what was the name again? Shavan? Shavan. Shavant. How many Shavants are behind you? You don't know how many Joshua's are waiting to be transformed. Do you understand? Like there are people who are struggling because you're, jam you're jamming to say yes. But again, some of you have said yes. There are people's lives who you don't even know what's happening, but you're changing them just because you said yes to leading an MC. So this is a mission of community. So this is a wonderful thing to see what God is doing through these wonderful leaders. Let's just give them another round of applause. Pastor Kia. In like about five seconds, what would you like to tell people out there who are still like one foot in MC, one foot out, like, can I lead? Can I do what would you like to tell them to encourage uh, them? I'd like that? to tell them that don't waste an opportunity. If an invitation has been made for you to join an MC, please join. Even better, start. Because you become a completely different person when you're responsible for others, when you're in a family. Because it's in the MC that people find out whether you have food, whether you're fighting with your partner, it's within the MC that those things happen and people can take care of you. So if you're not in one, you're missing out. This week is a good week to join an MC. We start meeting this week, so totally, totally join an MC. Come on now. Don't totally join. Totally, totally. Ish. 